grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The one who walks beside you today, holding your hand, is the same one who lives within you. This is an incredible mystery how you and Jesus are intertwined together. The light of his presence shines within you as well as upon you. We welcome you today and are glad you made it safely to church. Our loose offerings will go to the work of our deacons and outreach in our community. Flowers are given in loving memory of Jesse D. Cato by her family. Here's from McPeg's small group uh, opportunity after worship will begin next week. So please uh, plan on joining her then. Uh, home communion tomorrow at 1. If uh, anyone would like to go out and serve communion with me, let me know after worship. Uh, Bible Food and Fellowship on Tuesday and Latin Luncheons, even though they were canceled last week. If it's safe again, they will plan on uh, luncheoning this week. Are there any other announcements this morning? Included in our prayers, uh, Jane Gibson uh, was announced as being a member now of Phi Beta Kappa, and Kent Kirker is on the dean's list, so we rejoice with our young people. Uh, we also uh, ask your prayers for Ann Lepla, who will be having surgery this week, and uh, Duke Walter is having a procedure on Tuesday. Jen Eubanks is home from uh, the hospital, went home yesterday, and also... Molly, Barb Wheeler's sister, is home from the hospital, and we give thanks for that. And Barb Jones, Aaron's mother, is home from the hospital in New York. Uh, Chad Kutka got through his audition well, and uh, we'll be hearing from him this morning. Also, uh, Kathy Evans is going to the doctor tomorrow. She has a broken bone in her shoulder from a fall down in Florida when she was visiting her cousin.
joy and assurance of a right relationship, O oh God. Please save me in your purposes and help me to avoid the snares and pitfalls along the way. I thank you, God, that my desire to be your servant is acceptable to you and that we all will remain your sons and daughters forever. Let us worship God.
beats up on kids in his knee. I don't give their name, but do you have one? Okay, Mason, do you know one? Okay, now we have a problem. All right, you've got one like that too, kind of mean. And what would Jesus want us to do with the Mike Forshaws and Pete Hallers and those ones that you were just thinking of? Interesting, you mentioned the word nice. I just read something this week that said the word nice is not in the Bible. I haven't checked that yet. Blessed are the nice, for they shall be beat up upon. <laughs> but to be nice, and Jesus had a special way of saying that already. Love your enemies. So I just told you a story about Mike and Peter way back from third grade. You know what I have never done? Is to pray for them. And they were my enemies. I, I, they were faster and bigger and stronger, and I learned to run in the other direction. So this morning, we're going to pray for our enemies. And I'm going to have a little bit of silence, and I want you to say, God bless, and fill in the name of the person. Because I'm going to be saying, God bless Peter and Mike. Okay, so let us pray. You can pray for Mike and Peter. Okay. Let us pray. Amen. <coughs> okay. So we're gonna wait to go out.
saved you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he good, evil and on the good, he sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Open up our hearts and our minds for your words. You are our Lord, you are our Christ. Let the words dwell in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It was 1983, and a church in Gainesville, Florida, welcomed a brand new member named Ray. Unlike the others who joined that particular year, Ray had never been to worship. Ray had never attended Sunday school. He had never sung in the choir. He had never played on the softball team. And in the years since then, Ray has never set foot in Gainesville or in his church. And he lives only 45 minutes away. Ray's home is a six foot by nine foot cell on Florida's death row. It was from this tiny room that he joined the community of the Church of Jesus Christ three decades ago. On death row, you have to adjust to eating among those who consider you their enemy. And while this church knows Ray as a loving, caring person, a great thank you card writer, and one who likes to stay in touch with others, to the state, he is known only as a convicted murderer. But on that day in 1983, the church moderator and the senior minister went and shared communion with Ray in prison. Can you imagine that meal? We have this meal spread before us, but imagine that one. A little piece of bread, a, a little swig of juice, a visitation in a drab room with locked doors and only bars surrounding them. But it was a feast that was hosted by God and God accepting Ray as his beloved child. 32 years is a long time to subsist on that one little meal. And can we hope that goodness and mercy shall follow him all the days of his life in the midst of the gates and the bars and the locked doors and the rolls of concertina wire? Can we be convinced that one day we will dwell in God's spacious house together with Ray. Will we pray for Jesus to teach us to set a feast of love for all peoples? Will we be obedient to this song? To prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. How do we recognize enemy lovers, peacemakers in our midst? Who are the ones that can love the Mike Forshaws and Pete Almers of our third grade classrooms? And what does a person of peace do? After his resurrection, Jesus joined together with the disciples. They were afraid. They were in a locked room. He breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit. And he said, go and forgive others. And he said, this is my peace that I give to you. So Jesus calls us to be peacemakers who forgive one another, especially those that we call our enemies. Being on sabbatical forced me to spend a lot of time with someone who was not very good company. Myself. Some of you heard that one coming. <laughs> it's tough when you spend a lot of time looking inward, listening to your own voice, and replaying some of the tapes of things that you've said and done. And when we spend time looking at ourselves, it should make us a lot more patient with the failings and the faults of others. If we see it in ourselves, why can't we be more generous with it in others? There was a Presbyterian minister who wrote and defined Christians this way. Jesus made his church out of human beings with more or less 
the same mixture in them of cowardice and guts, <coughs> intelligence and stupidity, just apply the ones you need to to yourself here, selfishness and generosity, openness of heart, and sheer cussedness, as you would ever want to find in any one of us. And the reason he made his church out of human beings is that that's pretty much all there was available, and pretty much since then, that's all that's available are human beings. It's a point worth remembering when we lose patience with one another. We are fragile human beings. We worry about suffering or losing our secure homes and values to others. And hatred becomes a way of saving ourselves. Hatred is a way of taking away the doubts and anxieties that we have every day. Hating others can make us feel superior and in control. Hate is so much more common than love, and it certainly seems much more effective. Love fails again and again and again. Every time we try it and try to be understanding and try to be patient, we always get hit right back. Hate makes the world go round much more than love. Just read the morning paper of any country. This, there is really no other way to save us from ourselves and from each other until we are saved from our need, our need to hate and our willingness to fear. Picture your enemies, as I was having the kids do this morning. Picture that, that bully you had on the school play, uh, playing field when you were little. Picture the bully at work, the one who always puts you down. Picture someone you don't like to talk to because they always seem to be on the offensive and consequently are quite offensive to you. And then picture them as being invited by Jesus to come to his table. Pray today for the soldiers of ISIS as well as the families of the Egyptian Coptic Christians that were killed by ISIS. Be obedient to Jesus. Pray for your enemies. Now, when Jesus commands, love those who hate you and persecute you, we read it, we hear it, but we really do not <coughs> agree with it. We do not believe it's possible. And most of Jesus' tough teachings, those difficult sayings about nonviolence, about forgiveness of our enemies, about including all people, has had no strong effect on the entire history of Christianity, except for a few people in a few years along the way. The word for nonviolence did not even exist until 1900. So when we push our religion, we talk about belonging to our church, conforming to our belief system, and what will happen to you if you don't. But when we talk about faith, when we talk about our relationships with each other, when we talk about our relationship with the Lord, we're inviting Jesus to change us from the inside out, to be, in Paul's words, transformed. Now, it seems like we move through stages. The safest stage is the law, first five books of the Old Testament. The law sets up a perimeter, a boundary, a, a safe package to put our lives into, right or wrong. It's what we teach our children. It's right or wrong, here's the answer. But Walter Brueggemann suggests that we need to move to the next stage. We begin with the law and legalism, and we get to the prophets. The prophets were ones that could criticize society, could hold up an individual and say, you can do better, could hold up a nation and say, you can do better. A prophet is one who, in the presence of people, always took the side of God. And a prophet, when they were in the presence of the people, now God always took the side of the people. So it was a difficult position, always hated, always put down, always persecuted. But then Rugamon suggests, after the law and the prophets come the wisdom literature. That's why we sang the 23rd Psalm. The Psalm is part of the wisdom that God gives us. After the law, after being self-critical and critical of others in a helpful way of asking questions, we get to the compassion of the Psalms. It's much tougher there. A law, yes, no, right, wrong, legal, illegal, is a lot easier to find than what is the compassionate thing to do. 
Because having compassion sometimes includes tough love. The Quakers, back in 1955, wrote a book called Speaking Truth to Power. We are changed through suffering endured on behalf of the evildoer. That's like a parent suffering with a child who has done wrong. And in obedience to the divine command to love all people, especially the Mike Forshaws, Peter Almers, and Isis Troops, such love is worlds apart from the easy way of loving those who love us. Oh, we're, we're good at that. Of doing good to those who have done good to us. Whether practiced by individuals or nations, loving our enemies will always cause opposition, hate, humiliation, and utter defeat. But in the familiar words of Paul, love suffers long, it is always kind, never fails. That is the Holy Spirit, the gift of Jesus, that can overcome the world. But practicing that kind of peacemaking gets us nowhere without repentance. That's what the Sabbath or sabbatical is for, to look so inward, to listen to other voices, to see that we must repent and be changed first of our own self-righteousness, our arrogance, and confess that that which we do, that we do not intend to do, is evil in the Lord's sight. We must turn not only from our use of mass violence, but from what is worse, our ready to use, readiness to use that violence whenever it suits our purposes, our ends, regardless of the pain it inflicts on others. So watch yourself the next time someone attacks the stand you have taken. Our ego impulse is to defend to fight, to argue back, and to stop listening. The worst thing about our arrogance is when we stop listening. Because when we stop listening, we stop caring. And when we stop caring, we stop loving. We might just want to stop criticizing sinners for sinning and start loving them into the kingdom of God. Relationship building often requires swallowing hard and keeping your mouth shut. Arguments never bring people to Jesus. Arguments never bring people to Jesus. Love does. And the learning possibilities are limited only by our willingness to be teachable. So here's your challenge for this week. Homework, if you will. A certain monk went to his superior and said, What ought I to do, Father? I am miserable and my life is all great sadness. And the elder said to him, never despise anybody, never condemn anybody, never speak evil of anyone, and then the Lord will give you peace. Let us examine ourselves, and then see Jesus in every need. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith together with the ecumenical version of the Apostles' Creed.
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. We need you every moment of our lives, O Lord. Show us how to choose deep dependence upon you rather than deep despair. Help us to choose your presence rather than the problems that always crop up in our lives. Forgive us of the sins of criticizing and complaining about others rather than looking deep within ourselves to see the ways in which we have been hurt and have hurt and need to receive your peace. We thank you for those who are able to excel, those who get blue ribbons and prizes, Phi Beta Kappas and Dean's Lists. And we pray also for those who have never seen a blue ribbon or heard praise or have grown up in families where they are only put down and made insignificant. Guide us, O oh Lord, even as your church is built up, to build up one another, to give the word of encouragement to those who are discouraged. We thank you for the incredible participation in United Way, for all the agencies working together, and for the individuals in Coshocton who come through once again. We thank you for the gift of birthdays and anniversaries. We pray especially for Anne as she anticipates her surgery this week, for Duke Walters going to the hospital, for others who are considering moves in their lives, for those who are home and recovering, for Jen Eubanks as she continues her healing and going back to work. We ask your blessing upon Charlie and Pauline Hilt in Zanesville and especially for their families as they care for them. Be with Kathy Evans as she visits her doctor, and with those who are all caught in in the midst of snowstorms and ice and steep hills, even as we thank you for those neighbors who clean us out and push with their snow plows. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of this meal and for the enemies we will picture at your table this morning. The enemies of long ago, as far back as elementary school, the enemies of just yesterday, those that we refuse to call enemies, and yet those we criticize. We ask, Lord, that at this table all be welcome. We thank you for healing for Barb jo Jones as she is coming home from the hospital, for a friend who is still in recovery and receiving treatments. We thank you for the Bakersville and New Lexington Presbyterian congregations and pray your blessing upon Reverend Keith Leach and Reverend Jim McCurdy as we are part of Muskingum Valley Presbytery. We thank you, Lord, that at this meal you give us all that we need, even if not all that we want. For those great gifts, we thank you in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Together, let us forever praise God's name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Great is the mystery of faith. We remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. After the same manner also we do this. For on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. When he had blessed it, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me.
cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you show forth the Lord's death till he comes again. Anybody, never condemn anybody, never speak evil of anyone, and the Lord will give you peace. Examine yourselves and see Jesus in every neighbor. Amen. <laughs> 